here with Browns head coach Freddie Kitchens. First of all, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. A year ago today, would you have ever thought that you'd be sitting in that chair and we'd be doing your first interview as the head coach of the Cleveland Browns? Uh, no, I wouldn't have thought it. But, uh, you know, I didn't look to the future with uh, aspirations of anything other than just being the best that I could in that day. And that's truly what I did. And uh, like I said before, uh, shortly after the season's the, uh, the time for coaches to be uh, selfish. And once they decide where they're at, the selfishness needs to be at the door, outside the door. Um, and that's the way I've always viewed it. When you think about, you know, eight weeks into the season, you get an opportunity to call plays. But let's go back to when you called the plays against Detroit. Did you know the success that you had in that game? I'd imagine had to play some type of a role in you getting to be the offensive coordinator. Is it amazing just how many things had to happen to get you from point A to where we are here today? Well, I'm a firm believer that, uh, you know, things happen for a reason. And sometimes you only know what the good Lord has in plan for, uh, for you. Uh, as far as the Detroit game, I certainly was very appreciative to Todd to let me call that game because I had never done it before. So I didn't know how it was going to act. I just knew I was going to prepare like it was a game and I was going to go with it. And uh, fortunately, we didn't have any delay of games because of a lack of play call. When you think now to go in there as the head coach of the Cleveland Browns, to go do that media and everything that came along with it, kind of as you sit here now that it's all over with, what's kind of going through your head? Uh, really nothing different. Um, you know, I had some people ask me if I was nervous and stuff. I really wasn't nervous. I think uh, things like that is just, I'm always going to be myself, and that's what's so special about this job. I'm expected to be myself. Um, uh, so, you know, nothing really goes any different. I'm going to be myself and I'm going to tell the truth and uh, when I can. And other than that, I don't know what's so different about it. In your press conference today, you talked about how you gave the players so much credit for what happened on offense. And I can tell you from as being a staff person on the plane, when you come back and you shake everybody's hand and tell them that you appreciate them, just how that genuine you know, appreciation and also how you get everybody to buy in that makes people like you, just the way that you solicit play calls from players, et cetera. Is that always something that's been in your style, just to kind of you know, make sure everybody feels a part of the team the way that you do? Uh, definitely, you know, because I believe it, uh, more importantly, um, you know, sometimes people, you know, do things for show and stuff like that. And hopefully, uh, and I, I'm pretty sure that everybody knows I don't do anything for show. Authentic, yes. Um, uh, but here's, here's the deal. You've got to really understand and you've really got to believe that everybody's job is important, all right, first of all. So by, by that I mean uh, the people cleaning up the locker room's job is just as important as the offensive coordinator and just as important as uh, you know, the head coach. So everybody needs value and understand that their job is important and then create the environment where they can thrive, all right? Uh, and I, th I think that's what we do as coaches, we should do. Yeah, I think you do a very good job of it. When you know, a wise person around the NFL told me that if this was really a fair head coaching search that you were gonna get this job and certainly you did get that job. What was it like for you going through the process for a head coaching interview for the first time? Well, I, I certainly uh, appreciated the opportunity. And, uh, and honestly, I was very confident if, uh, if they were going to interview me, I was going to get the job. Um, uh, there's no, there's no uh, what you see is what you get with me. So if they were going to give me the opportunity to interview for the job, I was going to get it. You know, and do you think some of that comes from your leadership quarterback at Alabama, obviously, and does that help kind of your bond with a guy like Baker Mayfield? Because you guys both are very confident, very real, very authentic people. Well, I think, uh, you know, opposites don't always attract, okay? So in saying that, I think I became the way I am. It started at an early age of seeing my dad work for a living. And, uh, and then you, you move on up and different situations that you come across in the course of your life impact you in different ways and they kind of fold and, and uh, form and create who you are as a person. Some bad and some good. It's sure. not all good. Um, so you have to just realize that you're, er you're always evolving. You're either evolving one way or the other. You're not ever a finished product and you're not ever going to stay the same. Yeah, and you think about Baker Mayfield, a guy who was supposed to be undrafted, wasn't good enough to the number one pick, and now potentially Rookie of the Year, had an unbelievable season. Kind of follow that parallel path together to here you are now. He was an unlikely first pick. 
you were probably a year ago considered an unlikely head coach, and yet here you guys are having success. Yeah, and hopefully we can continue because it's all about what we do from this moment forward, and it's all about what we do today to finish up today and tomorrow to finish up tomorrow and, and stack days on top of days and top of weeks and on top of years and, and, uh, and see how, how good we are at the end. So I call you, Drew Stanton, Ryan Lindley, and Baker, the four horsemen. As being on the sideline, I get to see that relationship that the four of you really have. And it seems very special to me. And that's something I've talked about on the radio a lot, Juan. And to make sure that that group gets to stay together. And certainly, we're going to get that, which I think is very exciting. What is that bond that the four of you have that is so special? I think it starts with trust and respect. Uh, again, uh, those are not words I throw around. Like, I think that's the basis of everything you do. You have to trust and respect the person. And you start building that trust uh, by getting to know the person as a person. And that's why every one of those relationships started was as a person. It started that way. And then it forms the trust, which will enable you to have tough conversations. You guys also have a lot of fun alongside those tough conversations as well. How important is it to kind of have that working relationship where you guys do you get along, but you can also be real with one another? Because I've seen, I've seen both sides. We got a lot of the mic'd up where it seems like you guys are just joking, but there's also times where it can get intense. Well, uh, listen now, I mean, we coach football for a living. Let's don't make this rocket science, all right? And they play football for a living. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's about blocking, tackling, being plus and takeaway giveaways. And if you have more yards and you have more points than the other team, you win the game and everybody's happy. All right, but along the way, it's the journey. The, the thing I remember the most about the 2008 Super Bowl when we got beat by the Pittsburgh Steelers in Arizona was the journey to get there. It was the plane ride back from Carolina and back to Phoenix and realize that we were about to host an NFC Championship game. It was the, the relationships in that locker room that were formed from celebrating that win against the Philadelphia Eagles in, in, in the locker room in Phoenix. So it's the journey. So along the way on that journey, it starts today, but we're gonna have fun. And every coach that we've brought in here to interview, all right, I've let them know that we're gonna have fun. So if you don't want to have fun, first and foremost, you don't need to come here. And, and I need to know so we don't hire you. Um, but we're gonna have fun. The fun's in the winning. The more winning you have, the more fun you have, of course. It makes everybody, it makes the ice cream taste better and the tea taste sweeter. So uh, we're gonna have fun. Uh, now, we got we got work to do, and you've gotta understand that it's not play school or anything, but uh, we're gonna have fun and, and uh, we're gonna enjoy uh, the company of each other. And you're focused on something that comes across, you're so authentic, so real. You talk about trust and respect a lot, and then you mention it just here, but winning. That is what your singular focus is. And I remember when I congratulated you right after you got the job, you said, we haven't done anything yet. Yeah. We need to go out and win. Yeah, I don't really understand what we've done up to this point. We were seven, eight, and one, and that's not even close to being acceptable. Um, and it still pisses me off, really, that we didn't win the last game because we had opportunities to do that. So, um, you know, we, we haven't done anything yet. I mean, we're. You know, we're not going to do anything until we start practice and start meetings and things like that. And then we've got to set the tone at that point on what we want to get accomplished. What are you, you know, you, I'm sure you're thinking about it already, but what is the message that you want to deliver to the team when you get that opportunity to finally address the 2019 Cleveland Browns as their head coach? Yeah, trust and respect. You know, they got to trust that we're going to do the job and I got to trust that they're going to do their job. And uh, it's got to be within the staff. It's got to be within the organization. It's got to be within the team. Uh, you know, and, and can't ever lose that trust on either side of that. What was the first thing you did when you found out that you were going to be the head coach of the Cleveland Browns? I uh, text my wife because uh, if she had found out about it uh, from any other source other than me, uh, I was going to be in trouble. So. That's probably a, probably yeah. a smart move there, no smart move there. What's one thing, and I know you had the let's roll, you've said that to the fans, but what's one thing that you want to say directly to the fans? Because they do wear the brown and orange, so they're in your circle of people that you will care about. Right. What is something you want to say to those fans? Well, I, I would just, and I think they know this already, but I will reiterate that uh, what they're going to see on the field is someone playing with passion. Uh, hopefully we're preparing with passion. And when we get to the game, they're going to see a smart, fast, physical football team that's playing with passion. Um, and, and those are not options for us. Um, they're not choices that we make. Those are just things that we're going to be about. That's going to be us. And then we'll see if we play well enough to win. But those things are standard. That's coming with the package here. 
what's next for you? You've got to finish fleshing out your staff, and then what's next? Uh, straight into evaluations of, of our last year's games. We're, uh, you know, I told, uh, I was kidding with John the other day. I was like, you know, I told you guys I wanted you to be thorough. I wanted you to talk to everybody, but hell, enough's enough. We got to go. We got work to do. <laughs> and, uh, and that's the way I feel. I feel like, uh, but we're not. He, he made it very clear that a lot of people that their seasons ended when ours ended, uh, they're still on vacation. So, um, you know, we got to finish the staff and then move forward for evaluations and get ready for free agency, get ready for the draft, get ready for your OTAs and mini camps. And, uh, you know, fortunately we get to uh, have an early mini camp because we have a new head coach and uh, we're going to take advantage of that and keep moving in the same direction and putting one step in front of the other and, and taking it one day at a time and getting better in that day. Well, I'm sure I speak for everybody in the organization, all our fans, when I say congratulations, and we're looking forward to seeing the winning come here under you, head coach Freddie Kitchens. Well, thank you, and I look forward to representing that, uh, this tradition and uh, the effort and enthusiasm that the fans show to us all the time.